Howdy, Tinker Nerds. In my last video, we talked about the basics of web scraping. But let's be honest, that was just scraping the surface. Sorry if that scraping joke was too abrasive. I shouldn't have let that one scrape by. Okay, that is it. I am done. So in this video, we're going to go a little bit beyond the basics and learn how to scrape data from behind logins, forms, or pagination. So let's open it, dump it out, and scrape the bottom of this barrel because it's tinker time. If you want to keep those knowledge gears greased, please be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. If you haven't seen my last video on the basics of web scraping, scrape it. I mean, watch it because we're going to pick up right where we left off. In it, we talked about the beautiful soup library and how it can parse HTML so that you can search it for whatever you want. The problem is that beautiful soup doesn't really interact with web pages. So if you need data that's behind a login or on multiple pages, it looks loses its usefulness real quick. In those cases, what we need is something that can type words into fields and click on buttons or links all throughout the code. Oh, hi Selenium. Welcome to the conversation. Selenium is another Python library that can extend the functionality of Beautiful Soup, or it can just replace it all together when it comes to scraping data. It can automate web page functions, allowing you to programmatically navigate through websites to get the data you want. All right, let's get back to coding. The website we've been scraping is quotes.toscrape.com, a website that is intended to test web scrapers with. Now, if we look at it, it has a login option at the top portion of the page that when you click on it, uses a username of admin and a password of 1234 so that you can log into it. And then it just refers you back to the page with all the quotes on it. So what we want to do in our code is repeat this exact same process of clicking on it, typing in the information, but we're going to do it programmatically. So this is the code that we ended up with last time, and you can find this code and the code that we're about to write on my GitHub page, and you can find the link in the video description. Now what we want to do is edit this code to run with Selenium instead of using Beautiful Soup. So the first thing we need to do is install Selenium. So open up a command line and use pip3 install selenium to install it for Python 3. We're going to be replacing the need for beautiful soup and requests. So let's go ahead and comment those out of our code and then import the selenium web driver and service modules. Note that these modules are both case sensitive. To set up selenium, we first have to point it to the driver of the browser that we're going to be using. Basically, that's just pointing it to the path in which the browser executable lives. So so on a Raspberry Pi, it's Chromium, and we need to point it to our Chromium executable. The Chromium driver for the Raspberry Pi, however, sometimes has a few issues or glitches. So what I'm going to do is install the Chromium Chrome driver uh, from the command line and then point our Selenium service to that path. Now instead of using requests, we can point our variable to our driver service and then use .get to get the website. Let's start getting rid of the beautiful soup code and then begin replacing it with our Selenium automation code. The first automation step is to click on the login link on the web page. So let's right click on it and then select inspect and see what its HTML code looks like. And basically it's an anchor tag with some text saying login. So Selenium has a great way of finding different elements within the code and it's using its by module which we have to import. And this will let us search the HTML for all sorts of different elements like class, name, ID, CSS, and link text. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to use the link text of login which is what we need to find. So now all we have to do is just tell it to click on that link. Once it does, it's going to load the login page. So what we need to do now is import a time variable to wait, you know, about three seconds for the web page to load. And once it does, on that login page, we have a username field that we'll need to fill in our username. So let's right click and inspect that field to see how it is referenced in the HTML. And it has a tag ID of username. And likewise, the password field also has a tag ID of password. So let's add our username variable 
to our code and set it to find the username element by ID. Then let's add a password variable to our code and do the same thing. So the next step is to populate those fields and we can do this by using the send keys command. In general, I hate including passwords in codes. I also don't like usernames, but I'll do it in this instance because it's just for a test. Um, it's just very bad practice, very insecure. Despite that, I'm gonna use a library called gitpass that is gonna prompt us to enter in our password and then um, it will use that in the code so we don't have to store the password in the code. But if you wanted your code to be completely automated with no user intervention or we're using this in practice, then please find some type of Python key ring instead to securely store your passwords and login information. So just go ahead and use this code for get pass. At this point, all we need to do is click the login button. So let's inspect that. And what we're gonna do is find it by CSS selector like this, and then tell the code to click it. Once we're logged in, we're taken back to the original quotes page. So the rest of our code should work as before, except we'll need to replace these beautiful soup find all commands with selenium find element commands instead for both the quotes and the author variables. All right, now let's test our code and you'll see that unlike before, it opens up an actual browser window with a message saying, Chrome is being controlled by an automated test software. And then it goes to the login page and prompts us for a password. And so I'm gonna type that in and then the rest of the code should execute as it did before. And there you have it. You can now scrape data from pages that require login first. But wait a tick. If you look at the bottom of the page, you may notice a next button. This is known as pagination and it means that your data is stored on many different pages. How many pages? I got no idea. But what I do know is that we've only been scraping the quotes on the first page. If we wanna scrape all the quotes, we have to programmatically click that next button and continue doing so until there's no more next button to click. So let's first look at the HTML code for the next button. And it's basically a link with a whole lot of extra code in between the link tags. We could find the element by link title as we did before. However, we would have to then put all that extra code in there as well. So instead, what we're gonna do is search by partial link text and then just put next as the partial text to find. All right, so we're gonna need to loop through this and we can do this by using a while true loop and putting all of this code inside of it. We'll also need to add the quotes and authors variables inside of it as well to make sure that we're finding the quotes and authors on each of the pages. Okay, now we're gonna need to stop this code when there are no more next buttons to click because in essence, that should mean that there's no more data. So let's put our find next button in a try statement. Now Selenium has some nice exception handlers and one would work great for this situation and it's called no such element exception. So import that and then add it to the try exception. So if there's no such next button element, then it's gonna break out of the loop. All right, let's give this thing a try and, uh, oops, forgot a colon. All right, try it again. Now I'm gonna enter the password and off we go. The code is now grabbing the quotes and authors off of the page, then clicking the next button and repeating that process until there isn't a next button to click anymore. And that means we're at the last page. The code looks to have finished without any errors. And since we're still exporting this to CSV within our code, let's open up that saved file and see if it saved the data. It looks like we have 100 entries, which sounds about right. So it works. With all the automation capabilities that Selenium offers, it really opens up the door for being able to programmatically navigate your way through the web and collect any of the data that you want. So let me know in the comments if this works for you and your experiences with scraping data. You can click here to watch more videos like this and please remember to support me by sharing, liking, subscribing, or commenting. And until next time, keep tinkering.